Bonjour, mon cher. Comment vas-tu Ça va Madame Je n'étais pas au courant du mariage des rages, mais je lui ai apporté un cadeau. Ah, ça, c'est très bien. Mais tu étais en voyage en Suisse ou en Espagne En Espagne, je n'y vais plus. Pourquoi Il y a trop de nègres. On ne peut pas faire un pas sans en rencontrer. La négriture, hein Un oh, voyage. La négriture. Mais dis-moi, c'est magnifique, ta nièce, là. Ah non, Évidemment, il est magnifique. On ne voyait pas sa jolie coiffure. Et là, il est unique. Il est propre, il a une bouche. Pour moi, je lui offre une Mercedes. Pour les vitaines, je t'offre une villa. En fait, Victor, comment ça se dit en anglais Comment on dit Victor S'il vous plaît, mettre des cérémonies. Vous avez une villa, là, s'il vous plaît. Oui. Vous voulez dire un cigare Avec plaisir. Merci, mon ami. Monsieur le ministre, après. Vous en prie, monsieur le député. Non, vous êtes le représentant du gouvernement. Vous êtes le peuple, monsieur. Alors, reste. Alors, reste. Ok. So that's what Africa has become. And when that man says negritude travels, of course, the irony is obvious to the audience, but not to him. Um, and uh, those of you who have traveled to other countries and have met some of these elites uh, uh, would know immediately what I mean. Uh, uh, I probably cannot begin to tell you the deep contempt in which I hold such people. Um, but for the moment, they have power, but they will not have power always. Well, this may be the time to, to read you a poem about Africa that I wrote uh, uh, quite some time ago. And I hadn't read, or actually uh, in Gugi, uh, what Thiongo had not given his lectures <laughs> when, when I wrote this. I wrote this during the struggle uh, against apartheid in, in uh, South Africa. And uh, I called it Remembrance. And so it was, uh, 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 yeah, like uh, uh, déjà écrit, déjà lu, déjà vu, you know, when, uh, when I read um, uh, 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 Thiongo's lectures. Uh, and uh, I don't know, if I didn't consciously decide it, but maybe that was the reason why I assigned the book to you. And uh, uh, at least John, uh, who is not here, uh, wrote to me that uh, this is the third most important book he had read in all his life. Uh, uh, which is a little longer than yours, I think. Um, OK, so this is the poem I called Remembrance uh, uh, in memory of Africa and for Africa, and maybe for the poor everywhere. Remembrance. Between cold sandwiches and still coffee, between the ebb and flow of the impulses, between effervescent words and the inevitable pause. You come to me, Africa. Ponderous phrases collapse, banished to a solemn darkness. As you open my vision, Africa, I see your face once radiant now, scarred with wounds, streaked with blood and tears, your body, once the invitation of an ocean, now mauled and disfigured. Your dark, disheveled hair flowing in the brazen wind, your anguished voice crying out to your children, children, grown old with hunger, children with wizened eyes, hateful for an enemy who forced defiance, children who go from one sad morning to an empty evening, children 
who march from one massacre to the next. Suddenly, false the irony of words, thinking of Sharpville and Suedo, the sacrificial blood of Bickle colors my dreams. I remember Vietnam and the small-boned people. I remember the hollow skulls in Bangladesh. I remember the charred bones from Auschwitz. I remember the quivering lips of my lover. I remember the face of the enemy. I remember. I have seen it all. I was there. Before my eyes, death dances in its ghostly ritual while I pray for the lilac and the rose. And how I long for the eyes of Elsa. But there is no running away, neither for me nor for your children. Let me be then not just a witness, but one of your own. It is just that I too lean on the same wall on which you leaned, my friend. Just that I wear the same chains. Just that I am in pain with you and I dream with you. Let me be then one of the children among those who have grown up too soon on a planet at once brutal and beautiful. Children without illusions, dancing as easily the dance of life out of death as to the sound of a cowhide drum. How does tenderness survive? in a land scarred with terror? I still have not found the answer to that question. Well, let me finish on a somewhat more optimistic note. Uh, uh, there is a uh, songwriter singer in Bangladesh uh, uh, alive today uh, who has the same first name as I do, uh, but we are not related. Uh, and I don't even know him. Uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah. From 30th second. Yeah. This one actually shows uh, some of the scenes from the struggle for Bangladesh and ends with all kinds of images of, of the country and people working together for a common future. Okay, we will end this right here uh, uh, with all this 
complex, pardon me? Uh, the title of the song, I think I have to find. I have to find out. I think it's 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 probably. Uh, I love Bangladesh was one 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 of the refrains there. Uh, Amar Bangladesh means my Bangladesh, so maybe that is the title. Um, yeah. So uh, 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 we'll finish right here, and uh, uh, I want to leave you with the final message that. Uh, uh, although the world is very complex, uh, as I said in my poem, it is at once brutal and beautiful. Uh, there are both sides uh, of, of, of that. And um, uh, uh, one of my favorite American songs uh, um, is uh, uh, the song that Joni Mitchell wrote uh, that I have seen live from both sides now. Uh, it's a really beautiful song. And uh, uh, maybe it's sung most beautifully not by Joni Mitchell, uh, but by Judy Collins. Uh, so if you haven't heard it, uh, you should hear it both, uh, by both these women. Both are really great women singers. Uh, we have to see life from both sides, or maybe more than two sides, from many sides. Uh, uh, we should see the brutality, but we should also see the beauty. We should see the uh, hopelessness, but we should also see hope. Uh, we should see selfishness, but we, but we should also see altruism. And we should be able to find all of these things in each one of us. No, no one is perfect, as the fox said in The Little Prince, um, when he found that the little prince's planet did not have any chickens, uh, but it didn't have any hunters either, which pleased him a great deal. Um, so uh, we are on this planet, are both the hunters and the hunted. And I think uh, uh, if we can appreciate some of the contradictions and conflicts uh, in the world and within us, and ask ourselves, how is it that we can uh, try as best as we can to get beyond some of these contradictions in ourselves, uh, then I think we will be able to address the problems of the world just a little better. And perhaps we will be able to bring up other generations, future generations, who will do better than even we can do. So with that message of complexity and hope, I want to leave you. Thank you.